it's just using it now and working with it and doing the problems. All right, so let's do another one. So what do you think? Was it horrific? It's really not. No. We're just going to use it a lot. Okay, let's do this one. So we have x cubed minus xy plus y squared. And the question I have is, how do I know that this is going to be done implicitly? Because x and y's are touching, and I have a y squared over here. So to solve for y would be really hard. Okay? 3x so, squared. Okay, so we got 3x squared. You derive like old fashioned. And I could put dx, dx next to it, but I don't really need to. And then, do you agree it should be minus parentheses? Yeah. That minus mm -hmm. is like minus 1, basically. Yeah. Okay? So, how do I do the product rule? Will you walk me through it, John? Um, first times the derivative of second. Uh, I think I, I always do derivative of the first times the yeah. second. That's what I meant. Okay, so the derivative of the first is what? Uh, one. one. And then? One times y. Good job. Plus? X, no, yeah, X, yeah. times one. <laughs> times one dy dx. Can you explain why the dy because dx? It's always implied that you write dx over dx because it's there, but you have to, whenever you derive y, you always do dy dx. Because you're taking the derivative of that y with respect to x, so you're telling me that. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. T -Y. What is it? T-Y. Um, two over. Good job. Times dy over dx. Do you guys remember that? Equals zero. Equals zero. So the calculus is done. What do you think? It's not bad. Yes. So what have you done so far? So we took the derivative of the x's, uh -huh. as usual. And then we're taking the derivative of like these guys, it's product rule. And whenever we take a derivative of a y, regardless of what it looks like, we put dy dx attached to it. And that's implicit? Yep, yeah, that's implicit. And is that explicit? No, explicit looks like this. It's y in terms of x. Implicit mm -hmm. means they're all mixed together. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, so now the, the derivative of it's done, so we're going to solve for dy dx. Well, that's our goal. So we have a little cleaning up to do. I see that there's a negative out here, so I'm going to distribute through. You guys with me there? Yeah. Okay. Now what do I do? Yeah, bring this stuff over. Mm -hmm. Yes. It would be better if you brought x dy dx over so it becomes positive. We could. Either way, it would work. You're solving for dy dx in the end. What I would do to help this, John, is I would bring the y over first. Okay. And it would be positive y, and then bring the 3x squared over. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. So I would have negative x dy over dx plus 2 dy over dx equals, and I'm bringing the y first, y, and subtracting the 3x squared, minus 3x squared. <coughs> then what? Factor out the dy over dx. Right. Factor out the dy dx. And that's negative, sorry, times negative x plus 2y equals y minus 3x squared. Then divide by it. Does that make sense? So your final result would be dy dx equals y minus 3x squared. And again, I don't like the negative x in front, so I'll just put 2y minus x. <laughs> On the test, will we have to simplify? We will. Okay. We will. Okay. What do you mean by? Yeah, what do you mean? Like, in the fraction? like if this had a, um, like if all of them had a 3 in front of them, I would divide everything by 3. Oh, yeah. Because okay. it'll give you, sometimes it'll say, show that dy dx, like they give you this, and they'll say, show dy dx is this. And sometimes it's a simplified form like we just talked about. Okay, we'll do one like that in class. Now, let's do, I have one more that I want to do, and then we're going to just do some problems. 
this one I do every year because I think it's kind of fun. I know. Fun in my my terminology, right? So the question I have is, why would I why would I use implicit differentiation for this when it's really not an implicit format. It's, it's not y equals. And if I was to solve for y equals, what would it be? Well, like if I subtracted x squared, uh, then I would take the square root, and I would actually do a positive and negative square root. Mm -hmm. It just is a lot of work. So let's use implicit differentiation and see where it goes. Okay. So the derivative of x squared? 2x. 2x. Good. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. The derivative of y squared. 2y. 2y dy dx. Mm -hmm. And then? Zero. 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 Mm -hmm. What is somebody out there going to do? Win the 20. Yeah. Makes me cry. Every year. But this time you can't factor out. Oh, you can subtract. I can subtract 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x. And then I'm going to? Divide by 2. Okay, 2y. Two so dy dx mm -hmm. equals negative 2x over 2y, and this is yeah. what John was talking about earlier. Negative two so negative, x, negative x, x over y. Yeah. So that's not bad, right? That was fine, dy dx. What if I went a little further and I said, what if I went a little further and I said, fine, that mean to us last year? Second derivative. Second mm -hmm. derivative. What are the things we did with the second derivative? Find the maximum minimum. Find the, yeah. the max or min to, to use the second derivative test. Okay, so what does that mean? That means take what dy is, dy dx is, which is negative x over y, and find its derivative. So you use quotient rule. Good job. Yeah. So I am going to write it up here. dy dx equals negative x over y. Okay. So we have to use quotient rule. So what do we do first? Low, Load. which is y. y, d high, negative 1, minus high, negative x, d low, 1, good, right. dy dx, because it's yeah. you do it with respect to x, all over low, low, low. Okay, did everybody follow that? Yeah. Low d high minus high d low over low low. Now, look at the very end of that thing, dy dx. Well, what's dy dx equal to? One negative, negative x, x over y. y. Yeah, so let's plug that in. So let's clean it up as we go. So we have negative y plus x times negative x over y all over y squared. Are we good so far? This okay. is, yes. Where did you get that extra y from? The, the, the negative x over y. The derivative dy dx is that. Okay. Just plug it in. Now, just, just math cleaning. So what do I do? Extra root x. Yeah, I, I see like a fraction on the numerator. This is really over 1. Can we get a common denominator up there maybe? Mm -hmm. What would it be? Y. A y, okay. So if I was getting a y down here, it would be what up top? Um, y squared. Y squared. Y squared over y. Okay, so we have negative y squared over y, mm -hmm. and then minus x squared over y, all over y squared. Is that a common denominator? Mm -hmm. Okay. Got a common denominator here with the y. Why is it hard to write? That's a good question. Talk, talk to me, Carlos. What are you saying? Um, shouldn't that turn into y cubed on the bottom? Because, because of this guy. The, the right, you know, the little thing you start in the right corner and then work your way yeah. up and try to get your right. That yeah, that happened there too. But do you agree that this is really like that? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if I flip it up, mm -hmm. Carlos is absolutely right. That one over y squared could distribute through. Mm -hmm. So let's see what would happen. I would have negative y squared, right? And then do you agree if I multiply by 1 over y squared rather than divide by it, that distributes through as negative y squared over y cubed? You with me there? 
and then minus x squared over y cubed. That's good. Not really happy about the minus y squared minus x, x squared, so I'm going to factor that out and make it just one thing. y squared plus x squared all over y cubed. I just combined it, made it one fraction. And I always do this just for fun. Yes? So implicit direct, um, differentiation essentially is like when you have two separate terms that are multiplied together and you use product rule. All the time. And you have to um, take the derivative of, of everything. Including the like the twenty five in that Each case. Piece. Every piece individually. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's one more step here. Can you recognize it? There's one. Oh, we know. Mm -hmm. I pulled it out. Solve for the Where you least expect it. <laughs> the negative. No. There's, there's one more step here to make it perfect. Oh, good. Um, times 25. What'd you say? 25. What is 25? Zero. X squared plus y squared plus x squared is what? 25, 25 from the original. Oh, so negative 25 over y cubed is the final result. Good job. <laughs> I do this one just to show you. You're not going to see that. Thank you. That's cool, though. How is utilized? Yes, that's it. Uh, so, say, like, at the first step, we would like to Okay, I don't hear him, guys. Shh. Yeah? Where you uh, kind of take uh, the second derivative? Yes. Say, if you forget the dy over dx. That messes up, doesn't it? Yeah. It's wrong, because you have to do it with respect to x. So, that's like the whole premise of this whole thing. Whenever I'm taking a derivative of the y, it has to be with respect to x. Now, I told John to hold off on the y prime thing. A lot of people, some professors will teach it to you, say you find y prime. So anywhere that you see a derivative dy dx, they would put y prime there. Mm -hmm. But it's a little confusing. So I would suggest just use dy dx. Yes. So whenever you take the second derivative, you have to put dy over dx and then plug in the value for dy over Correct. dx. And that's only for um, implicit direct differentiation? Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to see it, just to have an idea. But I do, I do want to show you what some of the questions look like on page three. So let me pull one out here. All right. So you learned the lesson. What do you think? Just no, really, they're just going to utilize it. This will be the one. Someone's doing a presentation, so they're all sitting out in the hallway, so I'm checking to see if they're still. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this is from November, October, November 2006. I just really wanted you to see what a question would have looked like. So they're giving you if the equation of the curve is x cubed plus 2y cubed equals 3xy. So in my brain, why do I know it is implicit differentiation? Three two x terms being multiplied that are different? Two terms being multiplied. And do I want to solve for y in terms of x? Not at all. No. I don't want to make my life hard. How's that? OK. So I say, let's utilize implicit differentiation. So part i says, show that dy dx equals junk, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's asking me to take its derivative. And they give you the answer, which is really nice. And that's when, when we said, do we divide by something? It may happen in this one, because we want it to look exactly like that when we're done. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and write this one down. x cubed plus 2y cubed equals 3xy. So we have x cubed plus 2y cubed equals 3xy. All right, <coughs> what's the first derivative? X cubed. 3x squared. Just like old fashioned, let's derive. No worries, right? Okay, what's the next derivative? 6y squared. Okay, so we're feeling good about that. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there going, how did you get the dy dx? Are we comfortable? Okay, and what about 3xy? I recognize the product rule. Mm -hmm. 
two options, pair the three with the x and go that route, or put the three out front and then put parentheses in the distributive third. That's how I always chose to do it. Okay, so equals three parentheses. So with product rule, it's the derivative of the first times the second mm -hmm. plus the first times the derivative of the second. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and do it at your paper and I'll do it up here and you check me. Okay, I get 1y plus x dy dx. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to distribute the 3 through, and ultimately our goal is to get dy dx junk on the left and other stuff on the right. Mm -hmm. You guys agree with what I just said? Mm -hmm. So we have 3x squared plus 6x, I'm sorry, 6y squared dy dx equals 3y plus 3x dy dx. Mm -hmm. Are we, are we good? Okay. I like to get the dy dx on the left because then I'm solving for that where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring the other stuff to the other side at the same time. Are we good with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have 6y squared dy dx minus 3x dy dx equals 3y minus 3x squared. Pull it out. Can I divide it at the same time? Would we be okay with that? So I would have dy dx equals, I'm going to divide by, you pull out. what's that? Do you pull out um, three? Uh-uh, no, three. don't pull it out. Bring it over and then take care of it. Okay. So then you're going to divide by 6y squared minus 3x. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is everybody cool with that? Yes. So what did you bring over, though? I thought... I I brought the dx stuff over here and the other junk over there. Okay. And then I'm factoring out dy dx, so what's left is 6y squared minus 3x. Now, look at the answer they gave me compared to this. That's where that question came into play. That's not quite what I need, but oh look, they're all terms of 3, mm -hmm. so I can divide them by 3. Truly, it's like dividing both by 3, so it's really getting rid of it all together. So what would be left? would be y minus x squared over 2y squared minus x. Mm -hmm. And that was four points. Wow. Right? It's not bad. So that's like typically a four point part question. Having said that, the next thing is we're going to start to practice is how do we use it. We use it with things that we know. It's just bringing them back because we haven't done it in a long time. And this will be very beneficial to those of you that might be retaking. Okay. So, find the coordinates. So first, and all, first of all, my answer should be an ordered pair. Do you agree? An X and a Y. Mm -hmm. Find the coordinates of a point other than the origin. So what does that mean? The answer can't be the stationary zero, point. zero. Yeah. Okay? Cannot. Where the curve has a tangent, uh -huh. which is parallel to the X axis. So if something is parallel to the X axis, it's a y equals kind of graph, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a slope like this, right? When I find, when I find dy dx, other than something that's kind of fun to do now, right? What exactly is dy dx doing? It's finding. Well, since the slope is parallel to the x axis, would it be y equals something, but not x squared or anything? We're actually going to. Let me see if this answers your question. When I do this technique, and I have dy dx equals something, what does this actually really find? Slope. The slope of any tangent. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. The slope of any potential tangent. This particular one that we're worried about is one that's parallel to the x-axis. What kind of slope is parallel to the x-axis? A slope of zero. Uh, well, yeah. So that means this be equal to zero. Then you solve it. Then you solve it. Okay, so let's back up. So we have find the coordinates. I know my answer has to be an ordered pair. Okay, other than the origin. Zero, zero cannot be an answer. Okay. Um, where the curve has a tangent which is parallel to the x axis. So what I just did was I found any potential tangent slope. We're going to find the one specifically that has. It's parallel to the x-axis. So I'm going to take this dy over dx, and it's equal to 
y minus x squared over 2y squared minus x, is it x to the first? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And what am I going to do to this slope? Yeah. Can you plug 0 in for x? No. Ah. And it equals 0. Tell me why. Because because the slope has to equal zero. Right, and what is this that we found? The slope. The slope, uh, the slope has to equal zero. Why? Because it's parallel to the x-axis. Okay? I'm just going to leave this here and come back at the end of the period. Perfect, yeah. So if something is parallel to the x-axis, right? If it's parallel to the x-axis, I know that it's the slope of zero. What if it said it's parallel to the y-axis? Uh, then that would no undefined, undefined, right? It would be undefined. undefined. Where would a fraction be undefined? Or when it has zero. When what is zero? The bottom. The bottom is zero. Beautiful. So in this case, it's parallel. If it's parallel to the x-axis, the whole thing gets set to zero. So what do I know about a fraction set to zero? What do I know about that? The bottom means nothing. Bottom. The bottom means nothing. So when it's parallel to the x-axis, the bottom disappears. Mm -hmm. If it's parallel to the y-axis, the oh, bottom is equal to zero. Yeah. You see the difference between the two? So in this case, the bottom disappears. Why? Because I've multiplied both sides by this guy, and it's gone. So I have y minus x squared equals zero. Sweet. So y minus x squared equals zero. Well, do you guys agree? y equals x squared? Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. Okay, this is where the second period got a little tripped up because they were like, mm, now what? So we have found the place at which this particular slope is going to be equal to zero. I want to find the actual ordered pair on the original graph that makes the statement true. I have y equals x squared. Plug in zero or Okay, plug in x squared for y. Where? In the, first in, the, in, the, in the original equation. Because yeah. if I plug in x squared for y, what do I end up with? Just x's, right? Mm -hmm. So I can solve for x. So let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I have x cubed plus 2x squared cubed, right, equals 3x times x squared. Do you agree? I'm just plugging in everywhere I see a y and x squared. So what do I get now? I get x cubed plus 2x to the 6. six. Okay, good. Equals 3x to the third. third. Good. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring it all to one side. So I've got negative 2x cubed plus 2x to the 6 equals 0. Well, how do I begin solving for x here? Divide by, x divide by 2. I would divide by a 2 and an x cubed. You both said the right thing. Because what do I have in common? Yeah, I've got 2 in common, and i got an x cubed in common. So I'm going to factor out 2x cubed. What's left? Um, one. Negative 1. Negative 1. Plus x, yeah. plus x cubed equals zero. So you just set you, each one equal to zero? Correct. Mm -hmm. So what happens when I set the first part equal to zero? It's x, it's 2x cubed equals zero. x equals zero. That's what we want. X. Can I have that one? Is that part of my answer, x equals zero? What, is it, what does it distinctly say in my directions? The origin cannot be part of my answer. So I can eliminate x equals zero, gone. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's gone because when this it tells me no origin. So then the other piece might be the one. So I have negative one so. plus x cubed equals zero. Solve for x cubed. So x cubed equals one. X equals one. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. Um, like let's do this. X minus two. X minus three equals zero. Solve for x. What do you get? Uh, two. Oh. two and three, right? Now it's a little more complex. It's 2x cubed times negative 1 plus x cubed equals 0. Oh, Solve for x. You see the difference? It's just a little more complex. 
Yes. So when you got Y is equal to X squared, can you find again why you decided to plug that in? Because we're trying to actually find the ordered pairs in the original graph that make that statement work. Okay. All right. So now I know X equals 1 in the original graph. What do I need? Because the direction said find the y coordinates. Y. I need to plug a Y back in. So plug the X in the original. Plug it in the easiest place you can y place it. Yeah. Right, Y equals X squared, your easiest spot. What do I get when I plug that in? Y equals 1. So I get Y equals 1 as well. And there's your answer. Not too bad. And that was worth 5 points. Right. Not bad. Let me, <laughs> let me put one up here for you to look at and try. Actually, have to kind of go through that process. And then the next part says find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point 2, 1, giving your answer in this form. So let's back up to last year. Whenever I said find the equation of something, you use what? Your favorite, your favorite formula. formula. My favorite formula. And what did you need to use to find my slope. favorite formula? Slope, and slope. slope x and an x and a y. That's exactly right. Give it a try. Hello? Hey. Specifically, you're going to plug in. Um, you're going to plug in 
2 and 1 for x and y to get the exact slope. Yeah. Your slope should be um, 11 over 8 or 7. 